Hey guys, it's me, Biffles the Green here, and I'm here to tell you today about how I made a game that's all about speedrunning. Let's get into it. On the 4th of August, when the Scorespace Speed Jam started, I took a look at the theme and it called for two things. One, for the game to be Fadian, which meant that the gameplay loop should resemble the game getting over it with Bennett Fadi. For those who are unfamiliar with a previously viral game, making a mistake and getting over it would result in the player painstakingly losing hours of progress, making it really easy for the player to- Oh my god! I'm done! Oh god! Fuck! No, oh my god! The other theme of the jam was momentum. This was something I was quite familiar with, and immediately I thought of games made in the Source engine and its interesting mechanics for the conservation of speed. With these two things in mind, it was time to start developing. I had exactly three days to make a speedrunnable Fadian game with a focus on momentum. This wasn't the time to start drawing up ideas on a whiteboard or type up a document, no. If I was to speedrun the development of a speedrunning game, it was time to employ a few time-saving techniques. Getting into the project, I knew generally what kind of game I wanted to make. I wanted to make a game that utilized a grappling hook for interesting and analog movement. I wanted to introduce an element of mastery, something similar to players optimizing the racing line or bunny hoppers for going the straightest path and opting to make these mesmerizing curves to accumulate speed. In regards to my grappling hook, there's quite a bit of nuance to consider when you do something as simple as swinging from one place to the next. Letting go early causes you to keep a lot of your horizontal speed, but you might not get enough height to make it to your destination. Letting go too late, on the other hand, makes you go too high up and causes you to lose a lot of your speed. In addition to that, the grapple itself gradually pulls the player toward the grapple point, and this is also something to consider when making a jump. The fastest and most optimal lines are ones where letting go with the perfect timing, balancing both horizontal and vertical speed, is key. Eventually, I created a third-person camera system that I definitely didn't steal from my old project and an accompanying third-person movement system. After settling on a good overall balance of weightiness, acceleration, and momentum, I was ready to start implementing a grappling hook. I talked about the nuance that I wanted my grappling hook to have, and it took quite a bit of tweaking and testing before I got it to do what I wanted it to do. Here, you can see it gradually pulling me up which is what I wanted. But other things like the spring's rigidity and the force at which it pulled the two joints together when they exceeded the maximum distance were off kilter. But you can see me definitely having fun already. <laughs> That's fun. Which was a good sign that the game, at a fundamental level, was fun. At this point, since I had finished the main focus of the game, most of the remaining work was just simple level design. One of my goals was to keep my game so simple that I had to be resourceful with every aspect of the game to make it interesting. Less is more, after all. I started to color code the map to represent different things. Blue blocks would restore your grapple, white blocks were able to be grappled, and orange blocks were there to help guide the player. Currently, blue, white, or orange blocks weren't really any different from many other blocks since you could grapple onto anything you like, whenever you like. It was time to change that. I wanted the grappling hook to be a resource that would eventually only be replenished when you touched a valid surface. This way, players could interpret the upcoming part of the map and they would need to figure out how exactly they would make the jumps rather than blindly grappling onto everything like a maniac. Maybe players eventually will get really good at sight reading and will be able to successfully make jumps the first time they see them. Soon after, I finished creating the level that became the first and only Fadian level. This is what a full run looks like. While I'm pretty happy with how the level plays overall, I'm not particularly pleased by how it looks. Because I made the level Fadian, the level is really open, which is what lets the players fall down and lose progress when they fail a jump. However, as a result, it overwhelms the player when they look up, and it also makes it difficult for some players to know where to go next. But overall, the level was finished, and all that was left was some finishing touches. I ended up not winning the jam, which was a shame since I wanted to see the speedrunners compete against each other to get the fastest time, but props to the actual winners. The important part was that I already had the foundation of a game that I liked and was proud of. I've decided to keep working on this game and make it more worthy of speedrunning, and I'd like to show you the changes that I've made to the game after the end of the game jam, where I could freely work without the restriction of time, but that's for another video. Stay tuned to see more of the gameplay that you currently see and expect a playable demo then. Thanks for watching. This is Biffles the Green signing off.